good morning, good afternoon, good evening. However you're watching, wherever you're watching, however you're listening, wherever you're listening. It's the Bet Online Salute to Troy podcast. Last time you saw us, these two great gentlemen had Brandon Rice on. Excellent interview, guys. Let's kick it off to the man who probably is happy, the most happy right now because he is a native of Colorado. Ryan Dirut, how are you doing today? <laughs> doing doing great, but I'm mixed because obviously you're alluding to the Nuggets uh, beating the Lakers, but I try to not mention too much since our following is mostly LA based. Uh, but also I'm an Avalanche fan and they gave up seven goals yesterday and lost seven to six in their opener. So not often do you shoot, have 45 shots, score six goals and lose. Um, but anyway, that's a whole other story, but happy to be here with you guys talking spring game and, and all things SC. And we moved to the man with 14 PhDs, 37 masters and 16 undergrads, the math scientist itself, Jamal, Matt, man, Maggie, how are you doing today? Doing well, coach. Great to see you. Obviously, I, I share in the condolences with uh, with game one of the Nuggets Lakers. Uh, up 12 in the second quarter. We, we thought we had it, but let's be real. We never had it. We've lost nine <laughs> straight to these guys. I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if this core can do it, but um, excited to, to chat with you and Colorado Rye. I love the Rockies hat too with the LAFB shirt. It just it it shares, you know, the 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 both the loves down the middle. I love it. I didn't do that on purpose. I promise. <laughs> or just because it's black. So Fred, it is, he, is he is he sticking it to us a little bit after game one subliminally? <laughs> well, there's there's no way as a Rockies fan I could stick you anything. So at least that's where it comes brings me back down to earth real quick. Uh, at one at one point, the Rockies only had four games won this season. They're, they're so like, bad. They're already done. They're so <laughs> they're bad. They're already done. A, a Rockies fan like season, literally, it's it's fun for opening day, and then it ends. It, it ends go. very quickly. The days of Larry Walker are long gone. Don't worry, yeah. Rye. I'm sure that uh, that second consecutive NBA title yeah. will will wash the tears <laughs> away pretty quickly. Exactly. <laughs> you can somehow, yeah, and, and NHL Stanley <laughs> Cup, we'll see. So anyway, definitely. So test time happened, guys. They all got together at the Coliseum. Spring ball is over, and we have the spring game. Let's get into the spring game. The first thing I'm going to say about the spring game, one thing I did notice, and one thing I always commented about last year on my heavy critique of the Grinch who stole the national championship was there were never enough hats to the ball. Never enough hats to the ball. The first thing I noticed watching the spring game, there was always at least three hats going to the ball. There's always two hats on a receiver. And I said that last year on our live, I'm like, somehow Lynn makes it to where you always have two hats when a wide receiver is coming. It's very few one-on-ones. There's always help somewhere. I don't know. I would love to sit down and talk his defense with him. And I should have asked uh, Coach Henny that, like, can I come and talk defense with you guys? That was my fault. But (laughs) um, that – what I saw, um, Jamal, you're probably going to kill me, but I'm low-key hyped because the defense is a lot better. <laughs> the defense is way – this is different. Like, the hype around this should be around the defense. Like, are we going to get the defense better? And I understand it's a control It's a control test. I know there's a bunch of ops, there's a bunch of things to make it work, but I see things – that are a lot different. I look at it from a different perspective. Effort. The effort was way better, right? You didn't see a lot of people get smoked in the secondary, right? And that's going to happen. No matter what defense you're on, corners are going to lose some every now and then. But the effort and how many hats are running to the ball, like the final score is like, what, like 49 to 27 or something like that? That never happens in a spring ball game. Normally the offense, because it's so controlled, the offense takes over. There's something brewing different here. I was happy what I saw with the defense. Now we have to take it to the next step and translate it into a real-time game situation. Madman, what do you think about the spring game? Yeah, no, Coach, I think you said it really well. I mean, three things really stuck out. Uh, you know, we let's start defensively. I, I think three things really stuck out, and I think you alluded to it. One is... I think the level of athlete is a little bit different this year than it was last year. 
I think you've got some similar guys, but particularly in the secondary, particularly kind of on the edge, it just felt a different level of athlete from this year to last year, a little bit longer, a little bit stronger, um, you know, ability to kind of cover more coverage of the field and fewer steps. So I think level of athlete, I think, has, has been improved. I think number two, you've got a situation, to your point, Fred, where guys are swarming to the ball. So I think schematically, you're, you're seeing kind of more of a cohesive element, guys getting to the ball better, dis, more disruptive. And then third is effort. I think there was just sort of a motor uh, that exists this year that, that wasn't there in years past. So when you combine athlete with scheme, with effort, I think it just stylistically looks different. It just hits different on your eye than what we've been used to seeing with Alex Grinch the past couple of years. So it's been really refreshing. I think in terms of the game itself, tactically, uh, obviously you have to sort of start with the secondary. They really balled out and just showed just the variety of athletes in that secondary, the level of depth in that secondary, four interceptions overall. I mean, you saw guys like DeCarlos Nicholson make plays. You saw guys like Prophet Brown make plays. Marcellus Williams looked phenomenal in his interception. A lot of speed out there and a lot of being able to kind of get into traffic, get into passing lanes and really disrupt. Now, obviously, the offense also had its moments through the air with 396 yards passing. But the fact that the secondary was able to disrupt so much, I think that's takeaway number one. Uh, And then I think beyond that, I think, you know, you see where there's opportunity for maybe some improvement. I think not having Bear Alexander in the game, you sort of felt a little bit of a void in the interior and you're starting to understand why he was so important to keep uh, over the last few weeks with NIL. Because I think the, the Trojans look quite good on the edge with, with the likes of Anthony Lucas and with the likes of Jamil Muhammad. And then you've got Kamer and Fountain kind of looking like a guy who can, who can do some things as well. But I think you've got some nice guys on the edge. I think it was in that interior of the line, you felt like there was a little bit of a void. So having Bear Alexander there is going to be pivotal, and I think getting some depth there is going to be pivotal. I think the other takeaway is the offensive line is solid, not spectacular, perhaps even a little bit pedestrian. And I think there's sort of an opportunity to fortify that offensive line here in the next week over the course of the transfer portal. And then my last takeaway is, Miller Moss clearly looking like QB1. We talked a lot about it after the Holiday Bowl. It was his team. Maeva, is he going to come in and push Miller Moss? Can he do some things on the field that Miller Moss can't do? Ultimately, though, this is sort of Miller Moss's team to Lincoln Riley's point. So, Fred, lots to sort of unpack there, but just the eye test looks different defensively. I think the secondary really jumps out. I think the offensive and defensive lines are still a little bit pedestrian, particularly on the interior of that defensive line. And then I think Miller Moss clearly establishing himself as QB1. So those were my four or five takeaways from spring. Ryan. Yeah, you know, it, this is a game where, um, you know, regardless of it being, you know, kind of a pseudo practice and not full live, as a fan, you want you wanted it to go like this, where the defense kind of showed out and the offense maybe had some hiccups, but I don't think anyone's really worried a ton about the offense because of what, you know, Lincoln really can do. Obviously, you want to see some good progression. I think they showed some ceiling stuff, but you wanted the defense to come out and show vast improvement, which I think was clear. Um, I'll just throw a few other things out, so I'm not just repeating Jamal. First, I meant to text you guys, and I feel bad I didn't, but, Coach, they set the edge on defense. Yes. They were yes, setting they the did. edge on defense. Well, you yeah. that's good. I was thinking you were going to say that, not about hats to the ball, but you say it every week last season. They, don't, they Where's the edge? They don't set the edge. They were – they, they did have the an edge. edge. They did have an edge on the defense. That is correct. I was more happy that that they were getting three or four hats to the ball yeah. and setting the edge. You know what I mean? Like that was. I mean that 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 means more to me than setting the edge. You know what I mean? It's like one A and one B. Yeah, totally. So, but anyway, I just noticed that and it made me chuckle. Um, one uh, other point I think is is the youth movement. You know, I, I remember last spring game. I mean there wasn't a whole lot to talk about the defense period, but certainly 
not in terms of, you know, the incoming freshmen of, of showing out, you know, guys played obviously, but I remember we talked, we didn't have this show like this with us three, but we talked about it and we, you know, we mentioned Quentin Joyner, Marion Peterson, the young freshman backs that looked good. A couple of the receivers, obviously Zachariah branch and those guys, we talked about Malachi Nelson who had his debut and it was underwhelming. Um, but I, we didn't talk at all about any, any outside of that and especially any young defenders. And when you look at Marcellus Williams, incoming freshman, as Jamal mentioned, Cam Fountain, that dude's going to probably be playing, you know, he's going to be challenging for starting time at the edge there. I mean, these are young incoming freshmen that were getting reps right off the bat and, and utilizing them and playing very well on offense. Brian Jackson, a running back that really no one's talked about. And he looked great. He was kind of the number three guy after Joyner. Him and Peterson were splitting reps a little bit, but Jackson getting a little more of the nod early on. So I think there's a lot of, of good, solid. Uh, Xavier Jordan, also receiver, you know, finished with, I think, four catches, 40 yards or so. So uh, a good mix of the youth getting in there right off the bat. And these are kids still in high school. So that's exciting to see. Um, and then the last point I'll make is, is, you know, these transfers on defense, I think, showing how important they are. Jamal mentioned to Carlos Nicholson had that, that great interception. I thought he played well. He showed his length. You look at the back end, clearly Achille Arnold and um, Kamari Ramsey are your starting safety uh, safety pair. And, and they looked really good and, and good leadership there. Um, and then, you know, maybe the biggest one is, you know, Amaskaris uh, Arnold, uh, Easton Amaskaris Arnold, excuse me, um, who's just going to be a tremendous Mike linebacker, great leader you know, everywhere knows the football um, and so he's, as they've said, all camp, uh, you know, just a true Mike that's going to run the defense. So um, you could see it pretty clear how important he'll be to the defense as that true kind of middle middle linebacker. So, um, yeah, th- those are kind of my other additional takeaways. And and then I think Miller Moss, I agree, uh, you know, obviously had the two picks. One was not a great decision. One was just a bang, bang play at the goal line where uh, the defense made a great play on the ball and was able to get the tip drill uh, with Prophet Brown. But uh, Miller Moss, I think, is your guy, your leader. And, but it was fun to see Jaden Maeva. He definitely brings a different element. You know, we've kind of toyed the idea that this will not be a two quarterback system. That's not what Lincoln and I will do, but wouldn't shock me if they have a couple packages that Maeva can run, whether it's two point drills, whether whatever it is, because he gives you that kind of element of athleticism. So um, yeah, overall, I think a, a good day for the football program based on how the season ended. I, I will say this. I like what the Anton Lynn is doing with Gentry, Cobb and Arnold. I think that puts them in a better situation than when you see how they set the edge because Cobb is a downhill linebacker. I think – I'm not even going to think. I'm going to say this. He's probably going to be the most underrated linebacker going into the NFL draft, and he will probably have the longest longevity in the NFL because how much he plays downhill and on the other side of the line of scrimmage. When you set the edge, you see how good Mason Cobb could be. When you don't set the edge and have him running to try to go make plays – you see, you think he struggles, right? He's putting, he's putting him in a better situation to make plays. And the same thing with Gentry, he's putting him out of space, using his athleticism and his length to make him a better player. Like so, those are like the things that I like to that I like that I really saw in the change. I also like how, how it's a true four down system. It's not the three three five hybrid speed thing. It's a you're setting the edge, you're a defense in. If you're going to play a three, play a three. If you're going to play a two, play a two. You're the one tech, you're the three tech. Like, there's no shifting and moving around and no fancy stuff. They're playing football. That's all they're doing, right? And so that makes them a lot better, and it puts them in a better situation to win football games and to be a sound defense on foot on the field, which gives them an opportunity to give the offense another opportunity. So that's another thing that I like. I will say this, too. Number six was balling, bro. Y'all better watch out. Those fall shandies are coming. Number six was balling. Number six had him a nice little game. He had a big catch. Hey, this, yeah. the Miller Lemon connection is coming. I might be drinking shandies all fall. That, that, I'm going to end it on that one. What do you, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> you guys got anything to that, Jamal, Ryan? You guys got anything to, to cap off the spring game? Yeah, I mean, you never have to worry about receiver at USC, Uh, you know, and I think there's been a lot of conversation around, well, they don't have enough experience or, well, there isn't really a true number one. I mean, I think all of that is going to work itself out and emerge from now until game one against LSU. I think when you just have the talent that you do with with Lane and Branch and Lemon and Deuce and Hudson, I, I, I really think that 
you know, that's not an issue really. I mean, I, it, it's so fascinating because there's sort of an air of similarity on, on both sides of the ball in terms of where you're sort of feeling comfortable, you know, cause it's, you know, receiver and secondary are probably USC's deepest positions. When you talk about kind of captain of both units, you got Miller Moss on one side and you've got Easton Mascarenas Arnold on the other side. You know, I think it's a little bit on the interior of both sides you're you're worried about in terms of death. But there's there's sort of a mirror imaging that's kind of taken place on, on both sides of the ball right now, which is which is really fascinating to see. I think, look, what we're going to expect this year based on what we've seen out of spring this defense is going to be significantly better. And this was a defense that was in the 110s last year. So even if they're in the 50s this year, you're looking at an opportunity where the offense just has so much more margin for error in that Lincoln Riley system. Now, is the offense going to be potentially as explosive as it was last year? Hard to say that is the case when you lose a Caleb Williams, when you lose the Heisman Trophy winner. But I expect the offense to be probably... 75% of what it was last year in terms of explosiveness. But then when you've got a defense that's so much better in a significant fashion, I think that's going to sort of offset in terms of a net positive situation. So I think improvement is imperative. I think that's evident. And I think this team is, is headed very much in the right direction. Now it comes down to, you know, health matchups, uh, development from now until the start. But all of the right ingredients are in place here, particularly on defense. Guys actually know where to line up. Guys actually know what their <laughs> jobs are. And, and guys actually know how to play with each other. So the bar was pretty low with, with Grinch last year. And, and DeAnton Lynn and, and Eric Henderson have certainly crossed that with flying colors. Let me ask you yeah. this question, Jamal. And I, I, before we get to you, Ryan, let me ask you this question. Do you think, do you think with a number 50 defense this year, right and how explosive the receivers in the secondary is the fact that the quarterback is miller moss and he's more of a we guy and not a me guy do you think that makes them a better team oh absolutely i think uh it, it, i think usc this year I mean, this is not going to be an eight and five team. I think if this is sort of an eight and five team this year, something has gone drastically wrong. I think when you look at where they are defensively, there's one or two wins, you know, just on the defense being better than what it was last year. Mm -hmm. And I think with Miller Moss, the level of continuity in terms of him kind of setting up his receivers, understanding the offense and not really having this sort of element of, separation you know the, this year just from in in 23 it was just Caleb and how is Caleb going to adjust to his guys and how are his guys going to adjust to Caleb the point of departure was just sort of this separation it was sort of Caleb and the Trojans and how are they going to come together with Miller Moss it's none of that it's, it's sort of an offensive unit so I think with the chemistry on offense I think that chemistry is going to overcome some of the genius that Kayla Williams was able to provide, particularly in improvisational contexts. And I think they're going to be good enough. And then I think the defense just being so much better than what it was going to be last year. I think net net you're, you're looking at at least being two wins better, if not more. Yeah. And, and, but if they do, if they do end up six and oh, it's going to become Miller Moss and the Trojans. And we have to see how Miller Moss handles that, but that's neither here nor there. But I think, I think, in my opinion, that Miller Moss kind of gives me like a John David Booty, if that makes sense. Like, he's in his own world, but his own world isn't outside the universe of the team. And when I say that, like, John David didn't really hang out with us. John David would go to training table, eat his food, go watch some film, go home. You wouldn't see John David at the 2-9. You wouldn't see John David at Traddy's. You wouldn't see John David at the 9-0. He never really hung out. They said he hung out at like some bar on like the outskirts of Hollywood. And he, but when it came to Saturday, John Davis was about USC. Like when it came to practice, John Davis was about USC. When he was around the guy, he was about USC. Miller Moss gives me kind of that feel too. I just think he's a little bit better than John David. I think Miller Moss can get SC to the promised land, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you, Fred. I mean, I love John David. I mean, he was yeah. 
you know, obviously that was your quarterback when you were there right. and I had just right. graduated from USC and yeah, two time Rose Bowl MVP and still has the record for right. most yeah, Rose Bowl passes record, yep. in, in, in the Rose Bowl, you know, between his two appearances. I think John David was the perfect kind of system quarterback for what, you know, the team was running at that particular time. The one knock with John David, if you recall this, Fred, is it was the release point. You know, how many batted balls did John David have over the course of his career? How many interceptions as a result of kind of low throws? He just didn't get enough air under the ball. And and he couldn't really kind of air it out. And as a result of that, you were very confined in like a 20-yard radius. You know, you, you had to use the tight ends. You had to use the fullbacks back in the day. It was hard to kind of loosen up those offenses in 06 and 07 because there was just sort of a lack of verticality. I don't see that being the case with Miller Moss, you know, exhibit A being the holiday bowl and just the number of deep shots in the, in the verticality there. So I think you kind of get the best of John David in the sense of, Hey, he, he's a team guy. He's not going to bring additional attention to himself. And then you, you get the, the best of what he doesn't have, which is a little bit more of that arm strength, a little bit more zip on the ball, a little bit more velocity, a little bit more range. So I completely agree with you there. I don't even remember John David doing a, a interview, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's how he was just to himself, but he was a great guy. Ryan, you want to wrap up the spring game? What are your, what are your final thoughts? Yeah. Um, spring game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, last guy to mention Woody Marks, I think looked really good running back transfer. Um, you know, again, how much can you take from a, a non full live tackling, but you know, seem to hit the hole. Well, uh, he, he's going to be a, a use in the passing game. I, we might even see, uh, the running backs as a whole used more in the passing game, which I know we were like pining for last year. So um, I think that, you know, and obviously in this game too, they're, they're running a very vanilla offense. So they're not giving LSU much to go off of for this offense. So we're not seeing all that. Um, but I thought he looked good. And, and I thought it was interesting to go kind of back to the defense on, on Thursday, the last uh, media practice uh, in Gentry's time, he had mentioned at the end and he kind of, kind of tailed off. So I didn't hear exactly what they do, but after every, workout he said they do what they call a 116 now i don't know if it's 116 seconds of something i I didn't know what it was but they call it the 116 because they were the 116th ranked defense last year and so he's like i'll never forget basically essentially reading between the lines how bad we were because we do a 116 every day and we're never going to be that again so from 116 to 50 i think you hear these national people and i heard um uh, who was it talking about the the defense in the spring game? Um, I'll, it'll come to me in a minute, but I think a lot of national people will come out and like, Oh, well you can't improve that much. And this, and, and just, they need more five-star players and this and that. And look, we're not asking for this to be a, a top 10 defense, like get to no. 50. And that's a two game difference. Like get to just 50, like just be able to stop a nosebleed and, and we're good. Like we're, we can increase our, our winning. So, um, and I don't see that being a problem because, you know, again, just based on, the eye test of what we've seen so far, a lot still needs to transpire and, and improve, but um, it was definitely a, a good positive movement towards or what's needed to happen. So it was, it was a good, good day for the program. You know, Ryan, just what, what's interesting with what you said. And yeah, that was a great point about Gentry and the 116. It's for, for the talk about the improvement, right? I mean, look how much UCLA improved defensively last year with Lynn, right? It went from 87 to 11. So that was 76 spots that UCLA jumped in one year with the Anton Lynn. Now, I think UCLA's defensive players last year were better than USC's players this year. So to say it's going to be 76 is kind of a stretch. But, hey, are they two-thirds as good? Sure. And and so can you you jump 50 spots in theory? Absolutely. And if you jump 50 spots, now you've gone from 116 to 66. And so, you know, this team is sort of 66 on defense this year. I think that's going to put them in a position to be in every game that they're going to be playing. And then it's going to just kind of come down to execution and timing and pressure and and all of those things. So I think if this team can even be kind of like we talked about, 50s or 60s, um, it's going to make a sizable difference in terms of the season outlook. Yeah, it sounds so average being happy with 50 and 60. That's well, although, as improvement, then the next year you get the top 10. <laughs> you know, just being realistic. Last thing I'll say, though, because I thought this was interesting, Miller Moss in his press game, um, press conference, you know, a lot of guys usually won't like, and I don't think he was doing it 
at all. I know he wasn't doing the throw anyone under the bus, but a lot of guys won't really talk about the last season or they'll talk about it very um, nonchalant, but you know, I can't remember what he was asked, but talking about just playing against this defense. And he had mentioned how, you know, this time last year, guys were just running wide open in practice. Like basically I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but basically saying like it was a lot of open windows against this defense last year. And he said, those windows aren't there anymore this year. So, you know, take that for what you want. Obviously he's hyping up his guys now, but you know, that usually coaches a uh, quarterback's not going to call out his, cause there's a lot of teammates that were there last year too. So <laughs> I, I, thought, I found that interesting. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. He's, he's legit being honest and open about it. How defense has vastly improved. His teammates knew the problem. Don't worry oh, yeah. about it. You're not throwing the teammates on the bus. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jamal Muhammad admitted it too. He's like, yeah, this is co- completely different from last year. <laughs> the, well, even Lincoln Riley said Jamil Muhammad has become a better player in this scheme. You yeah. know what I mean? So, it like, yeah. Yeah. So, there's a lot of stuff that's going down. Moving forward, before we wrap this thing up, transfer portal news, transfer portal news, breaking news. The Trojans sign Greedy Vance out of Kentucky. The top corner. Florida State. Florida. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Florida State. You're right. It's out of Florida State. Uh, the top corner in the transfer portal. I'll let you guys comment on it first before I give my humble opinion on it. So let's start with Jamal. We'll go to Ryan, and then I'll give my opinion. Go ahead, Jamal. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where we've talked so much about this secondary room being so deep. And when we just, you know, we just had the conversation about four different guys having interceptions in the spring game. And we haven't even talked about Beavers and we haven't talked about, you know, we haven't even talked about Ramsey. We didn't even talk about Arnold. I, I know. Uh, Ryan, you mentioned it, but none of those guys didn't make interceptions or, or really had, you know, huge consistent plays. So you're talking about a room that's that's eight or nine deep. So at, at first pass, you know, Greedy Vance, a really good player, obviously been at Florida State a number of years, uh, 171 career tackles, four career interceptions, 12 career pass defenses. So definitely put a nice body of work together, part of the Florida State team that, you know, could have or should have been in the college football playoff last year. So a lot of big game experience, uh, sort of a winning mentality. Um, So a lot of positives. Obviously, you look at it from a depth perspective that, hey, you always kind of want to be deep at at, at certain positions, wide receiver being one, secondary being the other. So a lot to like there. But if you are going to go spend time, spend money, spend energy on recruiting – I would much rather the team focus on offensive line and interior defensive linemen at this point. So in that regard, it's very puzzling because for all of the positives that we're talking about this season, all rightfully so, the one thing that can derail this team uh, in 2024 is the offensive line. If the offensive line doesn't show up and Miller Moss doesn't have the requisite time to be able to do what he needs to do in terms of reading defenses, going through his progressions and making the right throws. It disrupts everything that you do, especially when you aren't the improvisational whiz that Caleb Williams was. So for that reason, when you look at the the, the different positions on the field and you're saying, look, we still need to kind of tighten up here on offensive line because that could be the one Achilles heel that separates this from being a really good season to a good season to a bad season. And so when you kind of take that mindset, you understand everything that you went through with Bear recently, I, I would have thought that the focus would have been on O-line and D-line more. Um, but having said that, look, never a bad thing to get another guy, but puzzling for those reasons. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, just to kind of add on it, you know, it's interesting too, because and this is, I'd be curious, not that we, I mean, maybe we can one day, but curious to talk to Dan Lan and, and Lincoln Riley about how, because it, it how do you define these guys? Do you define them as a defensive back or as a true cornerback? Because if you look at the rooms, you have, as it stands, you have 10 safeties, which is, which is a lot, <laughs> 10 safeties, which is crazy. And then but you have seven corners with, with Fagan transferring. So I think when you look at just purely corner numbers, you know, having eight is a good number to have. When you look at injuries, we look at the injuries they had last year. Um, and I'm just spitballing, but I think from that instance, like, okay, adding another corner maybe makes sense to get that number to eight. Um, but after seeing what we saw, I mean, he's a depth piece now. I mean, talented guy, but I think you have your starters in place already. Like he obviously you want to come in and compete and Hey, if he pushes guys or he ends up taking that over great, that's fantastic. But 
to me, this feels like a, a depth piece now because what we saw to Jacoby Covington, who we didn't mention, has looked great. And he looked great down the stretch last year. And, and to Carlos Nicholson, as we mentioned, um, Jalen Smith didn't even play. Who's going to be more of your nickel, whatever you want to call him, a safety or a corner. He's he's kind of been battling injuries, um, but he'll be he'll be, you know, fighting for a starting spot out there. So feels like depth. He was out on a visit. So but again, what it, it comes down to, what was the NIL package? And as Jamal said, if, if it cost a lot then that's where this becomes questioning it. If it didn't cost him anything and he just wanted to play for coach Belk and Dan Lynn and be with USC, then no qualms about it. And that's great, <laughs> but that's something we may never find out. So right, overall though, I'd say is, I'm happy with it. Right. Would, would, you know, what would be interesting is that if it didn't cost a lot, what are the odds that he jumps back in the portal? Like he, he comes in, he sees the, the lay of the land and then says, ah, actually that was a little premature. I, I got caught up with LA and the campus and the life. And now wow. I, I realize there's 17 other guys in the secondary here. You know, maybe I need to go somewhere else. You know, this is sort of the world that we live in. So who knows? It, it may be interesting that that may be the case. Because to your point also, Rai, you know, 10 guys at, at safety. You know, hard to believe that at least three or four of those guys, you don't even maybe give a look at corner and say, hey, are there some, you know, transferable skills here. So mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see with, with Vance, like he shows up, he's like, listen, I thought I was joining a team, not a village. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's 17 other dudes here. Yeah. So uh, this is sort of the world we're living in. So maybe it's TBD if, if that package wasn't too high. So I will say this, just giving a little culture and aspect to it. You got to remember there's two safeties. So when you say 10 safeties, there's five and five, ideally, right? Um, oh, that makes it better, you know. Well, it, well, it, it does though because <laughs> that makes ten. <laughs> well, well, the, you 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 travel with you travel. Yeah, with I mean, so two. I mean, the ratio is still the same though, right, Fred? I mean, if it's a single position, you're five deep, right? With at free safety and at strong safety, right? What you but you well, you looking at five deep, but then you think about you think about some of them are going to redshirt, right? Like they're not all going to play right now. You're looking sure. at you're looking at your first three, maybe, and then the second one may make the plane. Like no, I'm sorry, your first three, the fourth may make the plane because it's due to special teams. When that be your special teams guy, and the fifth guy on each side is a red shirt. So yeah. there is. We've been complaining about depth. Now we're complaining we got too much depth, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then we look at the corner. We look at the corner spot. There's now three corners in football. When you think about it, right? You think about that nickel cornerback right. position. So you need an extra guy. I, I asked, when I was at SC, I think we had almost like like ten corners in the room. There was a lot of corners. You know what I mean? It's just it's just a position that they load up on. You can't have too many corners, I guess. One's a return guy, and this and that, all that and that. I'm good with it. The more depth, as long as they could play, right? And then you got to remember, Branch. Branch is going to come back from injury sooner or later. So technically, there's. Or did you count Branch with the ten guys, Ryan? Yeah, I counted with the ten safeties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I and like Jaylen, Branch. Kind of Jalen Smith as a corner. Okay. Right, yeah. I, I like Branch. I hope That's Branch. Fair. Yeah. I hope Branch comes back from his recovery and 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 doesn't miss a step and gets better. I I really I re, I'm I'm a big fan of Branch. I might be more fan of a defensive Branch than I am of the offensive Branch. Woo! Hate me later. I don't care. You're just um, a defensive guy. Though. I am I mean, a defensive guy. You're just, uh, you know, there's a bias there. <laughs> Who are you? You, know, you talk about unconscious bias. There's defensive <laughs> bias with Coach Rowe right there. You know, as, as we close this up, then, Coach, after the spring game, who are your starting back five? Um, I'll go with the two UCLA guys. Uh, I can't make this starting. I can't. They got to still. I I don't have a starting corners. I don't have starting corners yet. They all do so well. You know what I mean? Like it's going in a fall camp. They're competing. Of course, of course. For me, right now, it would be it would be Arnold and Ramsey on the back end. Jacoby Covington and Nicholson are my two outside corners, with Prophet Brown playing a lot of time, and then probably Smith in the slot. Humphrey, like Humphrey's great, but he he's been banged up. He didn't play. So I don't really know what we have in Humphrey yet. That's Obviously, true. we know what he did at UCLA, and we know yeah. what he can do at this let, let, let me ask you this, Jamal, because you know, and I'll get on greedy. I know we're going off on attention. Let me ask you this, Jamal. When he, at UCLA last year, did the corners rotate a lot, or is that an Alex Grinch thing? I've never seen corners rotate that much. No, not that much. To, like, Alex Grinch. You uh, know Humphreys, I mean? Alex, Humphreys played. I mean, he was a rotational piece, but, I mean, he 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 played quite a bit. I mean, they, they, they sort of, I mean, it was sort of four guys that rotated, you know? Um, so I, I, I think that 
I agree with Ryan on um, Arnold and Ramsey on the back end. That feels pretty solid. I do think Humphreys is gonna gonna make the the starting rotation. Um, I think he's gonna kind of cover some ground here down the stretch. Um, I think I think you have to find a spot for. I mean, I, I think Beavers is is you know a guy that you know he just impressed so much, um, and then. Maybe Sorry. Nicholson, you know, so I think I think that that's probably my five. Um, but again, it's 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 at the margins. Yeah. Be- Be- Beavers is unique because he could play safety, too. Yeah, that's that's right. And so yeah. when you start when you start doing some interesting things that DeAnton Lynn likes to do in terms of that second linebacker, whether it's strong side or weak side, then, you know, you can sort of manipulate Beavers in a lot of different ways. And that's kind of how you get that illusion of three hats on the ball all the time, you know, yeah. so. Um, that's why I really like Beavers. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. Um, I want to get to. Wanna, yeah, it is a great problem, man. We've been complaining about depth. Now we got it. So, and they're all good, and they're all. Ex- I mean, except that interior defensive line, because yeah, you know, yeah, Lord yeah, yeah, knows, yeah. you know, Beavers an eight tackle? corner was more important than Bear Alexander's backup. <laughs> so you know, there's they still work to be done here. Um. Flywheel, Jamal, the flywheel effect. You know about the flywheel effect. Yes, the sir. Wheel is, the wheel is moving. Yeah. Once the wheel yeah, yeah. moves, then it gets all the way going. And then the, the, the only way. problem is I'm looking for another wheel, you know? So you, you the, uh, me, the, the corner me, flywheel is great. Uh, we you, we you need to get me, the, the, the interior trenches flywheel going. You're going to get hit with the line before the season even starts tomorrow. You want me to hit you with the line now in, 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 in May? I wanted to save it for the season. You're going to get hit with the line now. Easy, easy. Easy, big fella. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. We'll get there. <laughs> um, so one of the seven deadliest sins is gluttony. You know what I mean? And gluttony is, is equivalent to greed. I think greed is one of the seven deadliest sins too. Like you, you like mm-hmm. I think you're asking for a little bit too much. You know what I mean? At some point in your life, you have to tell yourself, I am happy with what I have, I don't need any more. You know what I mean? Even even when it comes down to your career, sometimes making a career. Haney, Haney learned the hard way. I need to fight Ryan Garcia. You're fighting a dude who's 50 pounds, 20, that's not 50 pounds, 20 pounds heavier than you on fight day. And you learn the hard way. Like, I should have never took this fight. You know, like even in business, like it's great to be the CEO, but sometimes you're just not a CEO. But it's okay to be an executive director or, you know, vice president. Like, Sometimes you hit your limit and it's okay. And that's all right. And it's good and successful. I don't see the reason to bring this kid in. And it always reminds me of September rosters with baseball, right? Everybody's mad at the Dodgers now, which they always do every year. They suck before they suck this time of year. And then all of a sudden June, they they take off and they're perfect right before the break. And then they end up winning a hundred games. But if you ever notice in spring, I mean, sorry, in September, they always start to lose a lot of games because that's when they open up the rosters and trading deadline. They bring new people in their locker room. I am convinced, Jamal's not convinced yet, but I am convinced that what they're building in their locker room is really, really good. And their core nucleus, the core Trojans on this team are policing the team and creating a championship atmosphere. You cannot eject cancer or take i can't call i don't want to call him a cancer so i'll say it like this you don't want to take a risk of injecting cancer into the, your nucleus we just talked about the numbers there's 17 dbs why do you need this kid the depth is there it's all there like what does he have that we're missing and i don't know and they he might be the piece that missing but like you said if if he counts for free then that's fine if he hops in the portal Guess what? That's fine. It's a cat. It's this isn't even a catch 22. It's one of those things like, eh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It is what it is. No sweat off my back. I think it was a waste of time in recruiting because we should have been recruiting up front. You know what I mean? Like that, that guy should have been a defensive tackle. So those are just the I I I I'm just like, I think we're getting a little bit too. Somebody needs to slow Lincoln down now. Like he was on, he's been on this mad push. Somebody now needs to say, hey, we can't take everybody. Let's start filling in the pieces that we really need. You've been doing great. Now let's slow down now, buddy. You're, you're, you're okay. You're doing good. You're fine. So 
that's how I feel about it. Unfortunately, like I, I I'm not excited about it. I, the kid's probably good. He was the top recruit in the portal, but he's just not needed here. You know, he should have went someplace. That's what makes me think it is money because he should have went someplace where he's needed. We don't we don't need him. You know, so that's where I stand on it. And I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, like it's there, there's we don't need him. That those are my feelings. You yeah. guys got anything? No. No, I no. I just, I just yeah. have a question, Coach. Who's the vice president in your story? <laughs> uh, right now? Yeah, no, because you were like, is, is Greedy Vance the vice president? Is no. he the executive director? No. Okay. No. Lincoln <laughs> Riley is Lincoln Riley is the CEO. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So, but you said, you know, in life, sometimes you know, you yeah. got to know when you're not the CEO, when you're not. So I was just wondering, are we? Yeah. Was that Greedy Vance, or oh, or is that just the generic? That's just a life lesson. Life just lesson life, for all life, our yeah, yeah, for yeah. all our salute Detroit listeners. You yeah. know? And 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 I will tell you this good mentors I love it. good mentors will tell you where your limit is. Like, you know, you could go try if you want to be a CEO, go try it somewhere else. Don't burn the bridge. Cause if you fail, you can always come back to your company, become a VP or something like that, because they respect you. Just just a little advice out there for all those people who who did not get that advice? I've recently got that advice because I said I wanted. I said something, and it was like, "Well, hold on, let's get, let's take a step by step." I was moving fast, so everything comes full circle. Only, right? only on the salute to Troy. There may be other Trojan shows, okay, but nobody gives you recruiting analysis. Yeah. No one gives you personality about next year that's balanced. That's uh, you know, we got some love, we got some hate sometimes, and then. Who else is going to give you the mentorship? The yeah. career mentorship. Coach's corner. I mean, we got it all. Okay. You know, this is what it is. <laughs> Straight coach's, from the coach's corner. Coach's corner coach's is corner, coming. Corner, baby. Coach's corner is coming this fall, Wednesdays. So that means I'll have to record it on Tuesday for it to come out Wednesday, right, Ryan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you all mean? Right, good. For yeah. Coach's corner to come out Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah. Or just coach's do it early. Ryan's like, you know what, Fred? You got to let me go. So I can watch the Nuggets go and hammer the yeah. Lakers in game two. I mean, and get oh, up to what? That's what's happening right now. Hey, right? That's God. what's going on. He's watching it. He's, he's speaking. He's, yeah, that's why he's smiling. It's that's been, why there's, no, there's, an, there's, there's a pinkish right hue. There's a pinkish yeah. hue to his complexion. The grin's a little bit wider. Like, we get it. Okay, more, we get it. This is, is going to be tonight. Nuggets in five. We I'm understand that. You know, it's a I'm gentleman's more... sweep, as, as uh, you know, as Snoop likes to say. Yeah, I'm more smiling because my daughter's right here staring at me. So that's, <laughs> All right, that's really so you're getting, you're, you're getting the hook. There we go. Guys, <laughs> it's been fun. I enjoyed it. It's so fun. How about we do it Now again? the off-season yeah. truly begins. Let's see how these two months go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the off-season. And nobody ever gives us show advice. Just give us show advice in the comments so we can keep watching. We love you guys. We... <laughs> two months. It's like four months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it four months? Yeah. May, June, July. Yeah, three months. May, June, July. August. Hey, shout out real quick. Shout out Big Mike Williams back at SC. That's big news. Yeah. I want a job at SC. What do I got to do to get a job at SC? Yeah. Tell Coach Henny to hit you back. Yeah, that's true. He has your resume. He does have my resume. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So. All, right. All right, guys. Ryan's getting the hook. Jamal's ready to go. And I'm just rambling. I want to go watch the Lakers. It's been fun. We'll do it again Thursday. Thank you guys for watching. It's the Bet Online Solution Detroit podcast. You know how it goes. Live free. I don't.